Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the issues Arsenal's build-up play and attacking structure presented towards Southampton's 5-4-1. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Arsenal's attacking shape, then we'll shift to the impact that the center backs and Odegaard provided, and then lastly, we will analyze Arteta's adjustment in the second half. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Arsenal in their 4-3-3, and Southampton sticking to the 5-4-1 that they should shifted to in the second half following a drubbing against Chelsea. So when we look at this 5-4-1 and focus on Arsenal's attacking shape, what we ended up seeing was that they did switch in between a 4-1-5 and at times they looked like a 3-2-5. That was down to Xhaka's positioning as he often did look to push into that gap between Armstrong and Ward-Prowse, but there were times where he dropped off a bit deeper in towards that inside left channel and that was simply down to the positioning of Saka and Tavares because what you expect there is that you want Tavares to push forward if Xhaka drops off into that inside left position and then from there if Saka wasn't on the touchline being occupied by Walker Peters he would drift laterally and then you'd see Valerie step forward and that's when you would have Walker Peters looking to step forward to Tavares while you had Xhaka in that inside left making up that midfield too. In many ways that shouldn't have affected Southampton's pressing if they were looking to step forward from the front which was rare because because if you do have the center forward, for instance, stepping towards White, you'd want Armstrong pushing towards Gabriel. Like I said, you could have Walker Peters pushing high to Tavares, Valerie sticking on Saka, and then Ward Prowse would be sticking towards Xhaka, and then you would have Romeo dealing with Lukonga, and El Yanusi could shift across to deal with Udegaard, or simply have Bednarek stepping forward to close him down. The same thing would apply on the opposite flank if you have the center forward stepping towards Gabriel, then El Yanusi could step towards White, Perot could push forward to Cedric, Bednarek can shift across towards Udegaard, and then you'd have Romeo and Ward Prowse dealing with Udegaard and Lakanga, and then from there you could have Stuart Armstrong shifting laterally to deal with Jaka. Ultimately, the decision to play in a five man backline made sense given Arsenal's attacking shape, because if you do have Jaka and Udegaard playing, playing off Ward Prowse and Romeu, then you could simply have Valerie and Bednarik stepping forward to apply pressure to ensure that they can't receive the ball freely. That would ensure that Arsenal couldn't progress play, but here Southampton failed to do that, and they failed to press forward as a unit to close down Arsenal. The best thing that they did in the opening stages is that when Arsenal's center backs were able to bypass the center forward to play the ball into Lukonga, you would witness Ward Prowse or Romeu stepping forward to apply pressure initially and that would force the ball out of Lukonga's feet quickly with often square passes out into the wider areas or passes back to the center backs. Therefore when we look to how Arsenal were able to create threats throughout this game, if you look to the wider areas they struggled to really have an impact on the left hand side in the early stages. Like I said Saka was often drifting centrally, Tavares was pushing higher up the pitch and even when you had Saka hugging the touchline and Jaka pushing ahead of Valerie, Valerie often did a very good job of stepping towards Xhaka or Saka to ensure that they couldn't impact the game. I guess the major switch that you can see from this Arsenal starting 11 is Martinelli starting from the right, and the reason why Arteta would go with the Martinelli down that right hand side is that it provides a direct threat towards the byline. Perhaps he figured that he Martinelli could fancy his chances 1v1 against Pro, and then with Nketiah up front, he likes to make runs in between the center back gaps, and he can make runs across the front post to serve as an aerial or a legitimate goal threat with his feet simply spinning off center forwards. However, the issues on the flanks was that on the left-hand side, Saka was often outnumbered in 1v2 situations, as we didn't often see overlapping runs from Tavares, and when Tavares was pushed out into that zone, he struggled to get the better of Walker Peters. Here we see what Arsenal should be doing down the left-hand side, and it starts with Gabriel not being pressured, and he looks to split Ward-Prowse and Romeo to find and Nketiah dropping between the lines. When Nketiah receives the ball, he could slide it into the path of Xhaka, who's unmarked ahead of Valerie, but he looks to carry the ball laterally towards the left channel, and that's where you also see Nuno Tavares running off Armstrong, who was caught narrow. From here, you expect him to either play the ball into Xhaka or Nuno Tavares, but Nketiah looks to play the ball wide into the path of Martinelli hugging the touchline. 
that places Martinelli in a 1v1 with Walker Peters. But now Walker Peters needs someone to pick up the run of Tavares into left half space. And that allows Martinelli to locate those 2v1 advantage. And from there, Valerie does shift across, but he's jogging. And Martinelli could slide the ball across Walker Peters for Tavares. And it forces Valerie into a last ditch sliding tackle that wins Arsenal a free kick in a dangerous position. And then when we look to the right hand side, while Martinelli could fancy that 1v1 towards the byline, it didn't have much of an impact for Arsenal's attack. And frankly, they only really looked good in that opening stage down those wide areas when Cedric was making overlapping runs and Odegaard was making underlapping runs to drag away Benarek because then they were able to pull Perot towards the overlapping run because Elianusi did a very poor job throughout that game of tracking movement out in those wider areas. In this example, we witnessed Nuno Tavares cutting in central and finding Odegaard in that large gap between Romeo and El Yunusi. He splits the midfield bank and plays the ball into the path of Odegaard. And from here, there is a 2v1 down the right-hand side, and Odegaard can run at Perot. But he looks to hold off the pressure from El Yunusi. And from there, he's looking to slide the ball into the path of Martinelli to place him in a 1v1 with the Southampton left wing back. As that play develops, you witness Martinelli now in that 1v1. And you can see that Cedric's making an overlapping run in behind him, and Odegaard's looking to make an underlapping run off El Yunusi. Odegaard's run takes away El Yunusi and it takes away Bednarek and now you could see Cedric continuing that overlapping run to take Perot out of the game. As we watch that play continue, Perot drops off on Cedric, Bednarek's taken out of the game and Martinelli's now placed in a 1v1 with El Yunusi and while he does place the ball onto his weaker foot, he's able to force the keeper into a tough save. A lot of that does explain why we witness Odegaard shifting out in towards that inside right channel to receive the ball. He was looking to receive it in between Romeo and El Yunusi, and at times to help Arsenal bypass that initial midfield bank of four, he dropped towards the touchline or into space behind El Yunusi, or simply at times towards the touchline ahead of him to receive the ball to help Arsenal progress their play. But in terms of how they were able to do that, first we'll start with their center backs who had a 2v1 against the Southampton center forward, and what they were able to do was find Xhaka and Odegaard in pockets of space between the lines or at times even in Ketia who was dropping off Lianco to receive the ball and serve as an ideal Lacazette replacement. From there, Nketiah would look to play balls to either Xhaka or Odegaard in that space. And then from there, they were able to slide the ball out to the wider areas to get the wide players in 1v1s. If Nketiah wasn't doing that, it was often Odegaard who was receiving the ball. And throughout that game, Gabriel and White were able to break the midfield bank and find their attacking shuttlers or Nketiah dropping into that space. In the second half, we saw more of White playing those passes, and at times they did help Link play, and their there were times where simply the attacking players struggled to connect with their teammates. But in terms of Gabriel in that opening half, on several occasions he was able to find Nketia, Udegaard, or Xhaka. And in many of those situations, when he found Udegaard in particular, he was able to turn, carry the ball towards Benarek and Pro, or simply slide the ball out towards Martinelli to have a run at Pro and break into the final third. So while Arsenal got themselves into legitimate goal scoring positions in that opening half, they started the second half trailing in a offered Arteta an opportunity to shift the shape. He swapped Martinelli and Saka, so now you had two direct wingers out in those wider areas prepared to run at Walker, Peters, and Perot. And what we ended up seeing from Arsenal that was successful initially was simply Odegaard continuing to receive that ball into that pocket of space between the lines ahead of of Bednarek, whether it be from Gabriel or Lakonga, and from there he was able to find teammates making runs out into the wider areas, or he was simply sliding the ball out towards Saka, and then looking to make runs across Bednarek to pull him out of position, and then that would allow space for Saka to cut in on Perdo, and you could have Cedric making overlapping runs as well. The issue that Arsenal encountered down that right-hand side when Odegaard would play the ball off to Saka is that while Odegaard would take away Bednarek, now you would see El Yunusi doing a better job of dropping deeper, and then they would also have Romeu prepare to shift over as well. 
So what often happened was that although Udegaard's movement was successful in dragging away Benarek, now Perot would show Saka towards the center of the pitch, but then Saka would still have to cut across El Yanusi and Romeu to get a shot off on goal, and that often resulted in Saka squaring the ball towards Jaka, squaring it towards Martinelli, Tavares, or eventually Smith Rowe. In many cases, that's why Cedric's overlapping movement is integral, even with El Yanusi dropping off a bit deeper. Deeper, because when he makes that movement beyond Saka and towards that channel, then you can have Saka now in a 1v1 where he only has to get across El Yanusi unless El Yanusi tracks that movement, or he only has to get beyond Pro where then he could instantly fire a shot or look to deliver a cross. But now they were simply throwing bodies at Saka when he was cutting across Pro or El Hinusi, and then Romeo would step in and at times you'd even see Ward Prowse shifting over to force Saka to square the ball towards a teammate over on the left hand side. Meanwhile on the left what you'd see is that Martinelli now would get himself into 1v1s with Walker Peters but Armstrong did a very good job of dropping off deeper and even if you had Jaka pushing forward to occupy Valor Ward Prowse could shift across so you have the 1v3s and then even with Martinelli shifting laterally if you put Tavares in that situation they're outnumbered there wasn't much movement underlapping or overlapping in those left channel zones so Southampton were fairly comfortable in getting the Arsenal wide player whoever was hugging the touchline into 1v2s or 1v3s or even times those 1v4s and their only real threat from that channel was to drag the markers towards them drop off the the ball towards Jaka and then have him play first time balls in towards the penalty area and even when we quickly switch back to the right hand side with Saka being closed down by two or three opposing players that was an option for him to pull the ball back to Udegaard or simply drop it back off to Cedric to look to play a ball in towards the penalty area. There was no real surprise in the personnel that Arteta turned to to help save the game. Initially it was Smith Rowe coming on for Cedric and we witnessed Arsenal shift into more of a 3-1-6 with Tavares as hugging the touchline, Smith Rowe ahead of Walker Peters and Valerie, and Martinelli serving as a central threat with Nketiah to break into the penalty area. But Tavares struggled to have an impact down that left channel, and Smith Rowe didn't really do a very good job of ensuring that he provided some sort of support with runs in beyond Walker Peters to drag away Valerie, or simply making overlapping runs as well. So the left hand side was pretty stagnant. The second alteration that we witnessed from Arteta was bringing on Nicolas Pepe for Tavares. And then you have Martinelli hugging the touchline and Nicolas Pepe moving into that central role to serve as the attacking threat. And there were times where you ended up seeing Pepe and Saka swapping positions. Pepe now making runs across Benarek to receive the ball. But despite Arteta placing his attacking players in their maximized positions, Martinelli struggled to have an impact down that left channel as he was often outnumbered. And he only looked to serve as a goal threat when he shifted laterally into a narrow position. And Jaka pushed a bit higher to occupy a larger zone. Saka struggled to have an impact down that right channel and the only threat that he offered was dragging defenders towards him and pulling the ball back to Udegaard because when he looked to cut central he was swarmed. And majority of Arsenal's creativity and substance in the final third stemmed through Udegaard's ability to thread passes in between the lines and receive the ball in that pocket of space just in behind El Yanusi. If we look to the start of the second half, it's Lokonga finding Udegaard in a large gap of space between El Yanusi and Romeo. And when he slides the ball into the path of Udegaard in a pocket of space, you can now see that Nketiah is looking to make a run off Bednarek's shoulder as Bednarek is ball watching. So rather than sliding the ball out to Saka, he monitors the movement of his center forward. From there, he could see that Nketiah is calling for the ball in behind the center back who's simply ball watching. And he ends up splitting Perot and Bednarek for Nketiah making a run into right half space. However, unfortunately for Arsenal fans, when Udegaard plays that ball in towards right half space, it's slightly towards the right. It gives Lianko time to come across to attempt to make a challenge. And from this position, Nketiah scuffs a first time effort across goal that's cleared. In this example, you have Saka ahead of Romeo and Udegaard calling for the ball ahead of Armstrong. Saka ends up dropping the ball off into the path of Udegaard, but focus on Romeo and Saka. Saka's clearly looking to run off Romeo, and Romeo is ball watching as Armstrong steps towards Udegaard. From here, you're expecting Udegaard to play the ball on towards his left foot, and that gives Saka time to continue his run off Romeo. And from here, you're expecting one of Lianku or Benarek to pick up the run of Saka. 
What Odegaard does well here is that he holds off the pressure from Armstrong, drags the ball to his right, and that's where you see Saka continuing his run in between Benarek and Lianku to make a run into right half space. Odegaard plays the ball between Benarek and Perot, and what Saka does well here is that he lets the ball roll across his body, and from here he has to hit it first time to avoid a challenge being made. As that play develops, you can see that Benarek's looking to get a touch in to ensure that Saka can't get a shot off, and from here Saka can look to play the ball across the 6-yard box for an Nketiah tap-in, but he opts for an effort on goal first time and the keeper ends up pushing it away for a corner. So as you can see, while Arsenal's top four aspirations took another hit with this loss, Arteta's tactical approach and adjustments exploited several issues with Southampton's 5-4-1, but lack of execution in the final third led to their downfall.